What's up, everybody? This is Carlos from Mundo Cinco, and we're back at it again. And we're right here with my boy, Abraham, from the AB Boys. How you doing, man? I'm doing good. Awesome, man. Awesome. So, um, tell us, man. Um, I know you. I met you a few years ago. But a lot of people, they haven't heard from you. Let them know who you are, where you're from, and a little bit about yourself. Okay. Well, um, everyone knows me as AB. Um Basically, uh, that's basically been my nickname for like a couple of years now. But like my family knows me as Abraham. That's my real name. That's what my parents named me. And yeah, pretty much. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Actually, I thought your name was AB for the longest. And I didn't think that was your name, but I always imagined it was Abraham. Uh, but I've never asked you. And just recently, not too long ago, I, I found out that it was Abraham. So awesome, man. And where did you say you were from? Or Well, originally, I wasn't born here. I mm -hmm. was born in Mexico. Uh -huh. What part? Uh, Rio Grande, Zacatecas. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So we're from Zacatecas. Awesome, man. And uh, what brought you to Houston? And how long have you I mean, Have you been here since a little kid? Or Yeah, since I can remember. I think I was like three when I got here. Three? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. And... Um, How did you start uh, dancing? Uh, have you been dancing since a little kid, or you've been um, dancing for 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 how long have you been dancing? Well, I've been dancing probably since I was like ten or eleven, but I was never in a dance team. I would just do my friends' quinceañeras and stuff, and that's pretty much how I got into dancing. And I would do quinceañeras like literally every weekend, like for my friends. I would stand on them, but I never danced in a dance team professionally or nothing like that. No. Yeah. Uh, Great. Um, and um, do you have any crazy stories, like, since you uh, started dancing or? Well, I have a lot. I mean, how I started is kind of crazy. The reason why is because um, how I started, I basically did my friend's quinceañera as a choreographer. You could say, like, mm -hmm. a, yeah, it was my first time ever even choreographing a 15 And I didn't really know how to, like, do anything. I didn't even know what an eight count was. I didn't know anything. I just did it, you know? What What is an eight count? An uh, eight count is more like, uh, un, like, it's like a whole, like, a whole routine that you would do for eight so you can know what's going to be next. So yeah. you count, like, five, six, seven, eight, and then you go yeah. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. So that makes a step so you can continue and you can know where to stop or hear the beat of the song. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. And um, so... You're with the AB. You're the AB Boys. It's your company, right? Or yeah. how did that company come about? How did you start that? Well, you know how I was telling you that I did my friend's quinceañera. Yeah. So basically, so she asked me. She's like, "Hey, can you do my quinceañera?" But at that time, I was living in Dallas because straight after high school, I had moved to Dallas. Mm -hmm. Like, just straight out of it, like two days after graduation. Yeah. I moved straight to Dallas. Um. So. I just had gotten back from Dallas. Like, I lived in Dallas for, like, two months and a half or three months almost. Mm -hmm. And then I came back over here because my parents made me. So, basically, so she asked me if I could do her 15, and I was like, yeah. So then I was like, you know what? Just uh, I was like, let me do it. I have free time, so I did it. So the guys that she asked to be in her 15, they're my first dancers. So mm -hmm. keep in mind, I went to her first practice not knowing who none of these kids were. Like, nothing. I didn't know. The only one that I knew was my brother because he was going to stand in it, on it. So I get to her first practice, and then she had, I think, like, eight or nine guys. But keep in mind that I never thought ever, ever that those kids were going to change my life. Yeah. Because <laughs> I thought they were just going to be, like, a normal 15, and that was it. So then we did her 15 along the process. I, well, I did her 15 along the process. I got to know them a little bit better. But I mean, like, I was like, I was used to it from past 15s that I stood on. Mm -hmm. I was like, you get to know the choreographer for a little bit of time, and that's it. Yeah. But then, yeah, después, <clears throat> I posted a video, the su 15 después, like, and it went viral. And a lot of people were like, oh, uh, you should do your own dance team. Because at the time, it was, estaba usando mucho, like, el Wapango and Wapango teams. Yeah. So I was like, no, I don't know, I don't know. So then I had made a joke. I had posted another video, and I had made a joke. I was like, AB's dance crew, and then people took it serious. 
Yeah. And then I was just like, uh, okay, I'll just do I'll just do it for the fun of it. You yeah. Know? You you start getting a lot of messages, a lot of calls, like, hey, I want you to do my consignment yes. and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Did did you have prices then or no? no? I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> what, were, what were you? Uh, how were you doing? I'm gonna be straight up. I'm gonna be straight up. The, how much I charge my friend? Um, I, I can say her name. Her name is Kenya. Uh -huh. I charged her a hundred dollars because <laughs> I didn't know how much you were supposed <laughs> yeah. to charge back then. Yeah. So I'm gonna be straight up. I charge her a hundred dollars. Okay, that's good. Yeah. At least you got a hundred bucks out of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, out of all the stress that they put me to. So yeah. yeah. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, how. How it went along, so then people started like saying you should do it, you should do it, you should do it. So then I was like, you know what? Let me just do it as a joke. And I thought it was just gonna be like a temporary one month thing, but it turned out to be like crazy. It just got bigger and bigger and bigger. And yeah, and I know. Uh, I mean, I imagine how long you've been doing this already. Um, I'm about uh, four years since four 2019. Years. Yeah. Awesome. Do man. you know? Do you know how we started? Like how AB was got known? No. No. Not really. Can you um no no i just i know you when i um when i first met you you're already popular um but no how did you start so after i started my dance team well when i started originally in 2019 mm -hmm. um we had did a competition um and we got first place and it was against like 22 or 20 some other dance teams mm -hmm. so we made it to the top three so it was this the old dance team named uh, Chaparritas con Botas uh -huh. and then JJ's. You know JJ's? Yeah, I heard JJ's. Yeah. <laughs> so ellos estaban and then us. So we made it to the top three and I was like in shock. I was like, out of all these crews that have more experience than us, yeah. I was like, there's no way. So we made it to the top three and then we ended up winning. Yeah. So that's kind of how our name got known a little bit. Yeah. But the crazier part is that a month or two months later, we did a competition um, where they were the winners will win a horse, a horse like a twenty thousand dollar horse. <laughs> really? Yeah, like you know the ones you yeah. take pictures with. Yeah, like the black ones with like yeah, long yeah. hair. Yeah, one of those. Those are nice. Yeah, yeah. those are expensive. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of people were kind of like so like intrigued in the competition because um, imagine little kids like winning like a, a horse, you know, yeah. like that expensive horse. So we joined the competition and we made it into the top ten crews or whatever. So each weekend for like. Two months from May to June, we will have to go to competition every Sunday, mm -hmm. and you have to get you have to get enough points to get to the next to the next round, and then so we made it to the final, which I was shocked again, um, and we ended up winning. Yeah, and we won that horse. And what I happened to that horse? We sold it. <laughs> sold it. That's yeah. fine. But it was a lot of maintenance yeah. to take care of it. But I feel like that horse changed my life a lot because. Um, a lot of doors open for me. Yeah. Yeah. And did like, you name the horse? Did, yeah. did you give it a name? What was the name of the uh, horse? We named him Santin. Santin? Yeah. Awesome, man. Yeah. And I feel like after that horse, a lot of people invited us to cities and a lot of places. Yeah. And then we got a lot of followers from that. Awesome. Yeah. What, what places have you gone outside of Houston? Um, well, typically like San Antonio, Austin, Dallas. We've done a 15 in Louisiana. Mm -hmm. Odessa, Oklahoma, and then this year we're going to Tennessee. Where else are we going? Uh, North Carolina, Kentucky, and New York. Awesome, man. Yeah. Look at you. Yeah. That's good. Na national um, team. That's good, man. Yeah, I think I <laughs> um, I remember when I first met you. It was at, um, I'm not going to say her name, the Quinceanera girl, but it, it was when the when the horse came in, you know, she yeah. was in her horse and the grand entrance and everything, walking, waving at everybody, and then the horse just started pooping. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think that was, that was funny, man. But, yeah. you know, I remember that, but something I really remember about you and how you are with your with your boys, the AB boys, mm -hmm. um, um, you probably don't remember, I don't know if you remember this, um, but you were outside, and mm -hmm. we were all outside taking pictures with the horse, and then everybody came in, but... I don't know what happened. You stayed out there and you were by yourself with another um, one of your boys and he was crying. And and I came back. I don't know if you remember that. You probably do. Or I'm not even asking you what happened. But I remember I came out because I was gonna, I was going to call you to come in and do something. And you just like, give me a second. And I, and I saw that you were like consoling him, like, you know, making them feel better and talking to him like you, you really care about your boys. 
Um, and I saw that about you. I've seen like people that treat their their dancers bad, and and like you can tell it's just business and something like that. But what I see about you and how you treat your guys, it looks like they really care about each other, like it's a family and stuff like that. Can you? Um, is it am I right or am yeah. I reading too much? Or how no, do you? You're how, right. how do you feel about you and, and your crew, your boys? Well, it's a lot. It's because you remember that day. Yeah, I do remember. Mm -hmm. It's a lot. I didn't even know you remember that. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> that kind of caught me off guard. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's a lot. Um, it's just a lot because all the kids have their own problems. Mm -hmm. And like, I feel like when they bring it to like, like they bring it up to me and then you just be like, damn, like all these kids like have a lot of, like they have a lot on their plate. Like every, I feel like every kid has their own story mm -hmm. and Sometimes a lot of them go through it. Some of them have easy. Some of them have it easy. Some of them don't. And I see all types of crazy stuff like in my dance team. But I try to make sure that here, like my dancers, they all get along. Mm -hmm. And what I noticed throughout the whole years is that, like, even every generation, they're still friends to this day. Like they don't. Yeah. I don't feel like they lose contact with amongst each other. Yeah. Um, and that makes me feel better because I still see them around and I see that they're friends with each other. So, yeah. like, my first group, they're still friends to this day. My group before COVID, they're still friends. And yeah. the friend group, that the answers that I had after COVID, they're still friends. Mm -hmm. And I feel like right now the group that I have, they're going to be, they're going to eventually be friends. And I still see them and I feel like they have all, they have all those connections. Yeah. And I feel like what makes them feel comfortable is that they're always there for each other. Awesome, man. Yeah. Um, that's great, man. Like I said, that's something that I saw in, in you and your guys, and that's good, man. Um, something, I have a question, another question. What is something you would, because um, you're young, and you're still young, and you started like four years ago, so you were younger. Um, what is something you, you, you want to, like an advice as a business person that you want to give to another young person that is, is starting like their business? It could be a dance crew. It can be photography. It can be anything like um, what, what do you recommend or what what advice do you give to a young person that's starting their own business right now? I feel like I honestly feel like they should never give up because I went through it too. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, honestly, because I, I guess I was like the new team to like, you know, like out there. Yeah. A lot of people would like do so much stuff to us. And I feel like. Uh, it's just just to keep going, like it's just another thing you have to like overpass to get to the place where you want to be at, because it's a lot. And I just feel like just keep pushing and pushing, and you're gonna get there. Sometimes it takes a long, long like road to get there, but eventually you'll get there. And I feel like those people that bring you down always push you to do a little bit more better, because it's like you learn as you go. And sometimes it's better to have someone there that's gonna like tell you the mistakes that they made so you won't do them. But in my case, I had to learn everything myself. Like, uh, you just have to, like, learn as you go. And I feel like that's the only way you'll get better at yeah. doing things. Did, did you have a mentor? Um, did, did you have, like, a mentor that, that guided you at first? Um, or, you, or you were just straight up on your own all the time? Uh, it was just on my own. Mm -hmm. But I just, the thing that made me keep pushing and pushing and pushing was this dance team. Um, they're from Dallas. Can mm -hmm. I say their name? Yeah, if you want. It's up to you. Well, this is old dance team name. Well, old dance team. They're still a dance team right now. Mm -hmm. But their, their team name is called Primitive Cadets. Mm -hmm. So when I found out about them, I was like 17 or 18. And I wanted to be like them, but I yeah. couldn't because they were in Dallas and I was here. Yeah. So I always looked up to them and then... When as I started my dance team, like I told you, that horse opened up a lot of opportunities for me. Mm -hmm. So the owner, the old owner, um, he texted me and then he was like, "Hey, um, he called me actually. He's like, hey, um, I'm having a show coming up and I want to invite your guys to do it with my guys. And he's never done anything like that. Mm -hmm. So this was like in 2019, the end, like Los Ultimos del Año. Yeah. And he invited me. Um, his name was Nelly. The reason why I'm saying was is because he passed away. Oh. Yeah. And the crazy part is that one of his own dancers killed him. What? Yeah. What happened there? 
Honestly, I don't know the full story. It's just I know some of it from what people told me, but it's it's kind of crazy what happened to him. And the good thing is that I got to meet him at least a good like three months before he passed. But yeah. I'm never gonna forget what he told me and my brother. And I feel like that's what has pushed us along the way. Mm -hmm. um, but he, uh, that was like a major thing that kind of impacted me to do a lot a lot better because he's not here anymore. And like even though I didn't really get to know him to like really close or anything, but he really, like, motivated me a lot to, like, have my dance team the way I do yeah. because of what he had. He had, like, honestly, what the the dance team that he had was really, really good. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like that's how a lot of people got to know his old dancers because he did a lot of good things for them. Yeah. Well, I know it's it's tough when, when stuff like that happens, but, you know, like, you use it to learn and, and to grow, and that's good, man. Um. Tell me, because now that, um, you're you're growing and you're growing a lot. Like, how many like events do you usually do a year? Honestly, I don't even know. <laughs> you don't even know. <laughs> but you're basically booked every weekend, right? Yeah, thank God. Yeah, that's good. Thank do, God. Do you do you do more than um, one a, a week, or so, do you try? Well, how do you try to do, uh, manage that? Because like, I know it's tiring. Like this past weekend, I did five fifteen on the Saturday. Oh man. And yeah. one day? Yeah, and one day. It's, it's a lot. Yeah. Um, but this weekend, since it's like oh, uh, you know, like what's it called? Like Memorial Weekend or Labor Day weekend? It's one of those. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, like people are off Sundays. Yeah. I mean off Monday. So I have fifteens yeah, yeah. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday this weekend. Yeah. Oh. So okay. it's it's a lot. But I bet. But yeah, I feel like I do a pretty good amount of events like every other dance team here. Yeah. yeah. And um with that being said, what is something new in the near future that you are planning to do it, it can, do you have something in mind or is there something new that you're planning to do because i always see you and 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 um social media always marketing and doing like different photo shoots and stuff like that and and i always see you like trying to do something different and something new and i like that about you um but is there something in your dancing that you're doing something new with or 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 do you have set where you're doing this, the routines for this year and then it changes next year how does that work or, or you know honestly <laughs> i feel like it's just it's just the ideas that i get like mm -hmm. um like this past was it like last photo shoot we did like a like a box and we put like a fitting on it and it yeah. looked like a magazine cover i like that i saw that yeah. but is, is that your idea or or mm -hmm. how or did it you was, collaborate with someone we covered, it was a whole like <laughs> collaboration team, yeah, yeah whole team Nice. But me with my dance team coming up, like what we have, mm -hmm. I feel like I don't know if I could talk too you much don't talk about it. That's fine. No, no, but but no. you do have something. Yeah, we do have something coming up, like that's gonna include dancing. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is gonna be with dancing. Yeah. But I feel like people are gonna like be like, oh, finally they they stood up to do that, you know. Mm -hmm. But I feel like dancing wise and my dance team, I feel like the more as I go. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm getting more professional dancers in my team. Okay. Yeah, which is good. Yeah. And I feel like what I have coming up for them, they don't even know yet. I feel like it's gonna be good. I feel like it's gonna lot, it's gonna leave a lot of people like yeah. talking. Yeah. Awesome. So yeah. something's coming up. Yeah. I like that. You heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but uh, so I see you do a lot of like kicker. What's it called? Wapango. Yeah, Wapango. Stuff like, um, is that all you do? Or do you ch switch it up? No, I feel like. That's how we started, like, mm -hmm. with the Wapango stuff. Mm -hmm. But I feel like we could do... I mean, we've done, like, hip-hop and reggaeton. But right now, I feel like my major thing that I really like the most is reggaeton. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And um, tell me, what is the process? Let's say I'm the quinceanera girl. Like, hey, you know, I want to book you guys. What is the process with... Um, how do you work with them, like, uh, from beginning to end? Give me, like, a little run-through of what, what the process is. For someone that's thinking about booking with you... Um, Either like, what is what, like basically what's the process? Is there a certain style that you only do? Like I know you kind of hint that right now, but um, tell me like if I was one of the Quintanilla girls um, right now trying to book you, what is the process from beginning to end? A little run through if you can. Uh, basically, like let's say um, they let's say you, like you text me or send me a DM. Mm -hmm. I send them the packages first. Okay. I always send them the packages first so they could check it out. Um, and it's and it says everything I eat, todo, like los packages. We have three packages, mm -hmm. este, and they get to pick whichever one they feel like les conviene más bien. Mm -hmm. And then once they're ready, I always tell them to let me know so we could so we could book them an appointment. 
Yeah. So then ya viene el appointment, and then I always ask them if they saw the packages or did we send them to them. And sometimes, I mean, all my every time they come from an appointment, they share you know what package they want. Yeah. To so make it a little bit easier, but I give them like a brief discussion of the package, el que van a escoger. Yeah. Este, ya no más les digo, ya no más digo cuándo es el deposit, and then I tell them, um, I give them like small references of stuff como si necesitan como el vestido, si necesitan yeah. como... Um, el outfit for the surprise dance, mm-hmm. necesitan like hair, makeup, photography, you know. Yeah. So, but sometimes they already come and they have all of that already. Yeah. So, ya no más eso. And let's say like they booked me like a year in advance. Mm-hmm. They're not going to see me two, three months before their their event so we can start practice. And I give them another appointment to catch up to see como van con todo. Yeah. So, the first practice is usually three months before the event? Yeah, like three months or two months and a half. Okay. And... Um, how many practices do I usually do uh, prior to the event? Like, how many do you average? Does it depend on the package? Does it no, depend on their level, how they dance, or what does that No, work? it's all equal. Like, let's say, um, but usually it's like, we usually do them like once a week, like mm-hmm. for a month, and then once it gets closer, like two days. Yeah. And obviously, like the week of, like todos los días. Yeah. yeah. But it's always, it's always been the same. Yeah. yeah. And... Is it hard with some certain girls like to get them, or are they, or or you you coach them good, or how does that work? Well, <laughs> me myself, I don't teach anymore. Uh-huh. Thank God, cause it's a lot. Yeah. Um, but sometimes, like I could tell when si saben bailar cuando no. Yeah. But obviously, there's there's different types of quinceañeras all the time. Yeah. Yeah. There's some that are really shy. There's some, you know, mm-hmm. and there's some that are really outgoing. But I mean, everyone's different, you know. Yeah. Any other crazy stories that you want to share? <laughs> Maybe something that happened at a uh, expo or something. <laughs> <laughs> what happened there? You don't have to say names if you don't want. Uh, it was just, it was a lot. It was it a lot? Was, it was a lot. And I feel like, like I said, you learn as you go. Mm-hmm. And honestly, this past expo was a huge success. I feel like I I was happy with the results of the, the, the performance, todo, but I feel like behind it, it was a lot. Yeah. Like, a lot of that could have been prevented, a lot, you know? Yeah. Este, but... What happened? <laughs> you, like I said, you don't have to say names. It's kind of like a little brief what, what what happened. I just feel like when you do certain stuff, other people don't like it, you know? Mm-hmm. And I feel like... I feel like in this industry, it's a lot of favoritism. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot. Like, you could tell, like... You could just get tell. And I feel like this past expo, for me, no, no me fue muy bien in the aspect of, like, how things should have been done. Mm-hmm. It's just, I feel like there was just a lot of favoritism. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I mean, this industry is really, the people don't know, but there's a lot of things behind it. A lot, a lot, a lot of things behind it. I know. Um, as a photographer, I thought, oh, it's quinceañeras. You know, it, it looked like all rainbows and butterflies yeah. and stuff like that. But people are mean in this industry. Yeah. And they stab you in the back and they talk trash. And it's not, it's no joke, to be honest. It's yeah. no joke. Especially when you're one of the best. And I think you're one of the best in this. <laughs> people are going to talk, man. I have, I have people talking about me right now saying, oh, he already peaked. He's not doing anything new or, or stuff like that. Um, they're talking right now but um let them talk if they're talking about if they don't talk about you you ain't doing nothing you know so yeah that, that's what i'm saying i feel like people get mad when you finally like do stuff you know yeah and i feel like it's the the more you grow the more people that are gonna get mad yeah and i feel like me, I'm going to keep going. I mean, honestly, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to keep going. Yeah. If it keeps making people mad, then, I mean, then that's on them. But I'm not, no me voy a quedar siempre, like, in the same place yeah. because of someone, you know? Yeah. I eventually have to keep going forward. No, como se dice, no me voy a quedar conforme en un lugar yeah. because of someone, you know? Yeah. I have to keep going. I have to get out of my box eventually, you know? Yeah. And, and, uh, and the people that I talk I've been doing this for so long, and they're in that same little place. They don't, um, they don't grow. They don't try to grow. Then they're just grumpy people, just saying how they're gonna hate. Yeah. <laughs> but do that. You keep going, man. And like I said, you you've been doing a uh, real good for yourself. And I know you got a lot of things in mind that you're gonna keep doing. And 
the sky's the limit for you, man. Um, so just real quick, tell me how people can find you on social media. Like if they want to contact you, your phone number or your whatever information you want to give right now, look into that camera and, <laughs> and, uh, and let them know how they can reach, uh, reach you. Okay. Um, well, you guys can find us on Instagram, TikTok as people say ABS boys, but it's AB's boys. Mm -hmm. Uh, just, uh, just ABS and then boys. And then, well, my number is 832-609-8389. It's on my Instagram um, sometimes I take a lot, a lot of time to reply, but eventually <laughs> I'll get there. <laughs> awesome, man. So it was awesome having you and we'll have you again in the future, man. I can't wait to see the new things that are coming mm -hmm. up with you. And like I said, thank you for, for being here with us today. Um, but that's it. That's a wrap, mm -hmm. man. Just thank you. No problem. Um, all right, guys. So I hope y'all enjoyed this episode, uh, with, the, with Abraham from the AB boys. It was awesome awesome a lot of great information that he, he shared with us today and um i hope you liked it man stay tuned for the next episode